She's a funny lady who makes you laugh. That's me. I'm Tammy Pescatelli. And this is News from Abroad. And please welcome my co-host, Ray Zawadney. Woo! Hey, what's up, Tam? Hey, Ray. What's going on over there in your Steelers fun bedroom? Oh, it's, it's 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 really small. That's about the only thing I can fit in here is a bed and that little Steelers poster. So, hey, listen, my my Browns. You know, this was fun for those of you who don't know. I'm from Cleveland. Ray's originally from Pittsburgh, uh, and my Browns are actually winning. They have a winning season, so it is a sign of the apocalypse. I just want you to know. <laughs> grab your go bag, have your plan, dig your underground bunker because this the world is off its axis and it is coming to an end. Just yeah, so you- no. It's not. It's not the pandemic. It's. It's not the riots. It's not the crazy presidential candidates. It's the Browns are good, and then you know it's. Uh, <laughs> well, once the Browns are good, all bets are off. That's how it works. It's all over. So hey, so you know what we do here. Um. Also, special shout out to our other co-host Colin Chamberlain. He will be back. You'll love Colin. Ray and Colin are very funny comics. When the world goes back to normal, you will see them out on their own. And a lot of times, if you come to see me. Uh, you'll see Ray and Colin. So this is this is about uh, my column in the Weekly World News, which is the world's only reliable news source. See, Weekly World News. This is my column called News from Abroad. So we do this every week. Yes, we do. Last week, we got lots of comments and compliments um, from Lawrence. He said that you were, Ray's voice was amazing. He loved <laughs> <laughs> he loved it because last week you were uh, the, wait, what were you last week? I was or, the devil last week. Oh, the New Jersey devil. That's what we did. We've had so many, the New Jersey devil. We had some really great comments um, on this. So if, by the way, feel free to comment, like, and subscribe, uh, and we'll, we'll shout you out. So we thank you for that. But ready? This is the column for this week. And this is a fun Let's one. Do it. It's news from abroad. Banana is direct phone line to aliens. When Carol Henderson made out her shopping list, she never thought it would include a communication device to another planet. But that is exactly what happened to the Ohio woman. When I got home from the store, I was unloading my groceries and I heard a voice. I live alone, so I thought maybe one of the cats had turned on the television and it was another of those political ads droning on and on. But oh my stars, was I wrong? (laughs) <laughs> you must be from Southern Ohio. Wrong indeed. As Carol searched the house, the voices led her right back to the kitchen, where the voices were emanating from none other than her grocery bag. As I got closer, I realized the bananas were talking to me. Actually, just the one with the sticker, said the 58-year-old. Carol quickly broke the communicating banana from the bunch. Lifting it to her ear, she said she discovered something that would knock the world as we know it off its axis. We are not alone. It was a garbled language at first, and then I was able to hear it clearly as if somehow they willed me to understand. The voice said to me, you are not alone. You can imagine my shock communicating with the high-ranking Nebuchadnezzar. The voice then told me they were from the planet Nebuphase, light years ahead of Earth. Scientists have long believed the Earth's inhabitants are not alone in the galaxy. From the NASA space programs to the airplane pilots, sightings of unidentified flying objects or UFOs have been reported for centuries. The Weekly World News itself has researched and reported on hundreds of alien encounters. However, never before has a two-way transmitter device been discovered. We chatted for about an hour. The alien told me about crop circles, how they were offended by ET, but felt Elf was more realistic. (laughs) He also told me that they have the cures for all the diseases plaguing the world right now, but that he had to hang up because he had to go charge his Tesla. Yes, I said Tesla. Apparently, Elon Musk is a nebophaser. He told me to contact NASA and he would call me back to give me the secrets and cures only because I have been so kind. The retired lunch lady hung up the space call and immediately tried to reach out to NASA. However, it was after five on a Friday and the offices were closed. I thought I would just call first thing on Monday morning. I was completely shaking like a leaf. 
not just because of the call, but because I realized I hadn't eaten a thing all day. My sugar was low. Without thinking, I peeled and ate the banana. With the communication fruit destroyed, NASA says they cannot speculate as to the validity one way or another of this woman's story. Elon Musk has not returned our calls. And as of this reporting, Mrs. Henderson has returned to the grocery store at least 27 times to no avail. <laughs> okay. That was funny, though. I will say this. This has been so much fun talking about these topics because we're taking them, obviously, in a lighthearted, fun way. But we realize that people do take them seriously. And I took it seriously for a quick minute there when you froze up. I just froze up right now. <laughs> like, what is going on? Like, what is this? Is these are our electronic communication devices? I mean, it's no banana, but oh, they're tapped in. The aliens you think are they're tapped. tapped? Into this. Absolutely, <laughs> they're they're totally tapped in. Well, it's funny too. Like, look, communication device. They are communicating with uh, aliens. Do you know that? I mean, they're trying to. NASA does have satellites that send constant, kind of like um, close encounters a constant number sequence because that's what neil degrasse tyson said that if we do communicate with another planet or in another galaxy it's not going to be a language like english or french those are that's yeah. a direct quote from him it's going to be like on math or sound yeah it makes sense i i, I had i had a guy on my street growing up that tried to communicate with aliens all the time he um there was the, uh, did you ever hear of Kecksburg, Pennsylvania? He had a show out there at a, at a, um, at a fire hall and the whole place is decorated with alien stuff. They have a secret alien room where, uh, because they believe that a UFO landed there. Kecksburg UFO incident occurred December 9th, 1965. A large, brilliant fireball was seen by thousands. Some people in the village of Kecksburg, about 30 miles southeast of Pittsburgh, reported something crashed into the woods. Wisps of blue smoke, vibrations, and a thump. The area where the object landed was immediately sealed off on the order of the U.S. Army and state police officials, reportedly in anticipation of a close inspection of whatever ha may have fallen. State troopers and Air Force searched the woods and reportedly found absolutely nothing. That's a quote. Okay, nothing. A spokesman for the Defense Department in Washington said it was a reported fireball and a natural phenomenon. Wow. Yeah. Uh, last week we talked, we had Josh Blue in Frighteningly Funny, and he talked about an a uh, spaceship following him home, and they were telling uh, the explanation was uh, balls of lightning. Isn't that weird? Yeah, There's I like how they, they always cover it up with something that's kind of just as scary. Pittsburgh <laughs> resident John Hayes says when he was a 10-year-old boy, he saw a flatbed truck emerging from the site near his house carrying something from the, something the size of a Volkswagen out of the woods. Now, can I show you something? Did I ever show you this alien ship that I no. saw? I've mentioned it a couple times here, but it, I was on my way to a show. They said that the roads were bad. They should be closed. Do not travel the highways. It was a lot of snow. But I had to go to show because if comics don't go to work, we don't get paid. So I had to catch my flight out of Cleveland. That meant I had to go down Route 79 in, in Pennsylvania and then across on Route 80 from Pennsylvania into Ohio to shoot up uh, – to get to the Cleveland airport. I mean, it was snowy, but it wasn't, there was no reason for the roads to be completely closed and barely anybody was out. And it was that time of day where, um, as I've told the story before, where it's like, it's becoming daylight. All of a sudden it's a three lane highway at one point. There's like 10, 12 cop cars. Look at it, it just froze. They're like, let's see, see the aliens don't let me tell the story. 10, 12 cop cars are behind me. Whom, and I think that they're pulling me over for being on the road. So I pull over. They pass. This froze again. Mm -hmm. They pass. All right. Behind, there's a load. There's two semi trucks driving together, carrying something that I have never seen again before. 
I can't, I've asked people who work at nuclear plants, it's this giant round disc. I've asked people in the military because I've done a lot of USO tours. No one seems to have an explanation for what this is. Then there's another 10, 12 cop cars behind them. And then I got behind and I, this was early on before they realized like people might be traveling with phones. I'm gonna tell you what year this was. This was 2012. So they probably weren't expecting, this is my actual picture, okay? Do you see that? Let me show you a close, more close up picture. Oh wow, I just spun to the day that I had to hug the lady with those boobs. That's horrible. This is, this is crazy. Right when you started, oh. <laughs> I know, it, right? But it keeps glitching, right? Keeps glitching. Okay, let me see. Right can... when you started talking about these. I know. You um, that, those alien boots. Look, you tell me what that is. <sighs> Two trucks are, are driving that. Listen, below in the comments or on my Instagram or wherever you want to do it, if you have an idea what you think that is, it is not a nuclear, apart from a nuclear plant. I grew up in Perry, next to the Perry Nuclear Power Plant. I have a lot of friends that work there that are engineers and know all the things. It's not a part of a nuclear plant. It is definitely not, um, it's, it's definitely not like a part for a house. There was a lot of coverage. You see how many cop cars and stuff you can see, how many people, like there's just like a few of them that were there and, uh, no one was on the road. They told us to stay off the road because there was snow. And that's what it, that's what it looked like. You tell not me. To, not to mention it gets way snowier than that. So it was definitely like they were like, get off the road because we're about to be transferring some weird stuff. Yeah, it was 2012. So they really weren't expecting people to have phones snapping. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. now they know that someone would have their phone out and do it. But, you know. I, that, my phone is my office. This is my office. So this is how I communicate. So I had it and I was like, Oh, I got to take a picture of that. And no one, I mean, I've asked for years, way before this podcast, way before, explain this to me. I've been searching lots of USO tours I've done. Thank you for your service. No one can give me an answer for this. So. Well, I don't got it. <laughs> I know it's creepy. My neighbor growing up said that he was abducted by them and oh. at, at his because wow. uh, he's from Kecksburg but moved to Pittsburgh in my neighborhood and if you go to his house at the, at the end of my street his windows are covered with newspaper clippings of all these like alien sightings and he has a sign on his door to drop off your electronics because he's if, that you're not using because he's trying to communicate with aliens wow well because I know that the, the, that whole tinfoil thing started um Aldous Huxley who you know is famous author uh, he had a brother who wrote a book and they started with the tinfoil would block out any communication, unwanted communication. So I don't know what they're trying to do to conduct communication. So I guess that's why they have the electronics. I don't know. There's so many communication devices, ham radios in the old days, CBs. When I was a kid, we had CBs. I, I don't think I was old enough for CBs, but my stepdad sure used them. Uh -huh. Right. He would, I, would, I would be so thrilled when they'd be like, Ray, you could talk on the CB for a little while. And right. then I would make up something like, yeah, yeah. I would be, I would, you know, I would be like, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is Carrier Pigeon 1, Carrier Pigeon 1 to Red Falcon. And then immediately my stepdad would be like, all right, you're done. Yeah, right. Breaker, breaker. Is anyone there? Come on back, trickers, and talk to Teddy Bear. That was a, a song that they had about this sick boy. Teddy bear and that the, all the truckers, it was the greatest thing that they were communicating and they got in a big convoy and they drove past those sick kids house and they each brought them a teddy bear, break a breaker, break a breaker. What's your 1020? That means what's your, do you know what, what's your 1020 mean? Uh, no, I have no idea. 1020 is where, where's your, what's your location? I was wildfire because there was a song about a horse. She can't ran calling wildfire. Their popular CB names are big bag. Uh, okay. Twitch, Swamp Fox, Fat Cat, Scrap King, The Wombat. Oh, you could hear that one. Wombat over and out. Oh. Right. I like The Wombat. I want yeah. that. That's cool, right? Wombat. Yeah. Blue Knight, of course. 
that's a that's got to be a, a Viagra reference, right? Don't you think? <laughs> right? Don't you think those are real trucking handles from around the country? And if you're any of those people, and I just mentioned your handle, thank you. Let us know because uh, I'm gonna get a CD, a CB, and reach out to you because I, I I feel like I need to get a CB just in case something goes wrong because you know me. Except right. for except for Blue Knight, we don't need that pervert. Yeah, Blue Knight, we don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> Could we communicate with somebody? I don't know. We can have a hard enough time communicating with, with humans, right? I mean, they have those books, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, as it is. Yeah. I mean, we, hell, we can't even look up from our phones to have a conversation right now, let alone trying to speak to other worlds. But, Ray, do you think that w there's something greater than just us here? hundred percent, yeah. I, I, um, I, I started reading this book when I was a little younger by this guy named David Icke. And um, he, uh, well, he's a little crazy because he believes that the entire government is, a is there's alien people. But he, he does have some facts ab about what they've hidden at like Area 54 and, and things that certain presidents have seen and have said that they've seen. So it's pretty. I don't it's it's Area 54, three doors down from Area 51. Yeah, that's the. <laughs> <laughs> what am I thinking of? Oh, what was that old club? Studio 54. Studio 54. Hey, there's some, there was some weird stuff happening over there too, you know? Uh, Area 54 was where the aliens went to go dance and club and do drugs, and then they went back they to came 51. Back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but hey, listen, people actually went down and tried to get them to bust open Area 51. Did you remember when that was happening? Yes. COVID? And they weren't very successful. No, and they say that there are some people that are missing from that still. I'm like, listen, I don't know about you people, but if you've ever been through an IRS tax audit, you will realize that you can barely survive those, let alone go try to bust in somewhere that they don't clearly want you in. Okay, <laughs> so there's some declassified documents that have leaked to the internet. Now, the hard part about this kind of stuff is, are they actual documents? Yeah. Okay, I don't know. But that's how they're being touted, okay? And according to a lot of people on Reddit, they say that they're, they're real. That they wrote these dossiers on communication with extraterrestrial intelligence. By the way, why are they all intelligent, okay? I mean, if you <laughs> came to this planet and you met my brother first, clearly that's not intelligence. It could be a whole planet full of my brother and his wives. I don't. That's. They're. I think we're overselling the intelligence. Um, yeah. Why are there? Why are there never just a bunch of dumbass aliens in right. the movie? They all have to be smarter than us. Come on now. In my shallow dive, I found some things that are kind of interesting. This is a figure that the government was trying to send out. Oh wow! Take a look at the breasts on that woman. See that yeah, she, right got some, she got some cans. <laughs> I don't know if they were doing it on light bright or what. I got better text messages from people who don't really want to talk to you. <laughs> you know, yeah. with those weird upside down symbols. And um, I don't know. It's a the communication thing. I just, I feel like we haven't learned how to communicate with humans. We're really going to be in trouble trying to communicate with aliens, you know, but I'm not against it. I, I like the idea. I when I wrote the banana, I just thought that's a fun thing because you know why we always used to as kids you'd hold the banana oh, yeah. as a as a phone, right? So, are are you scared of aliens? Um, let's be clear. We're talking about um, outside the <laughs> atmosphere because I don't want to have people marching. <laughs> I have enough illegal aliens that live in my family, um, so <laughs> uh, they're not illegal. But I wish they were so we could send them away. I don't know. I, I have to believe that there is something greater than us out there. Like, of course, yeah. there has to be, right? Like, because we're just not killing it. We're not killing the game in any sense of the imagination. Um, and it'd be funny. It, it's funny. Like, I, I was goofing around with the thing that Elon Musk is an alien. I think some people are so brilliant that they're either aliens or time travelers, a guy like Elon Musk. But there's a lot of people who think that there are actual aliens. Tom Hanks keeps coming up over and over again. If you do a shallow dive, Tom Hanks is definitely, people think he's an alien. Heidi That's Klum. Possible. Yeah, Heidi Klum totally thinks she's an alien. Weird stuff. But I think 
that aliens, okay, listen to this. I'm going to blow your mind. Okay. And I'm not even a stoner. Oh, get ready. Cause you're really going to do that for real. My theory on aliens is it's time travel. It's us on a different plane of time and without gravity, our heads elongate, our eyes elongate in the dark, your eyes adjust. So you don't need, you know, uh, your pupils just take over your full eye, your skin without oxygen becomes what gray, right? So I think, the aliens that people see with the big heads and the black eyes and the gray skin or green skin are just us on a different planet. I think it's kind of cool to think about. Right? That's deep, yeah, I like, right? I like that theory. I'm deep. Can yeah, we rest like Pescatelli? I like, <laughs> <laughs> I like that theory. I like when somebody has a theory about something. <laughs> I don't know. There, and then I think it's more about a space-time continuum than it is an actual well, like, can, can it be a coincidence that so many people saw something that looks so similar? No, that's what I'm saying. Like, listen, if you go to China, okay, yeah. there are certain characteristics and features that the Chinese have more than the Irish have, more than the Americans have. America is a weird place because it is truly a melting pot. But there are features and characteristics of indigenous people. I'm like, okay, so all of the aliens look the same, right? That's bizarre. How does that happen? How do all aliens, at least when you would watch Star Trek, they look different. You had all the different aliens. Colors and, and squids. and Yeah, you had all kinds of stuff, you know? So, I mean, every planet they went to, they looked different. Um, so I think that it's possible <laughs> that it's just literally a – a space time continuum thing and it's a lack of oxygen a lack of gravity and a lack of light and then, and then there's something just so silly about just thinking that a woman is trying to find the right banana to communicate with and the one with the sticker because there had as a kid didn't you always want the banana with the sticker yeah it's the best one you could take the sticker off and put it on your forehead or put it on your arm or Right. Well, yeah. there, there is a woman in Florida who is the world champ. She's got the record for collecting the most stickers. She's collected 21,000. And you know how the sticker started? Just to let you know where the bananas came from, whether it was Ecuador or Mexico or whatever, because people had specific places that they wanted to have their, their bananas had to come from the right place. So this lady sounds like a real catch. <laughs> <laughs> they collect all bananas. Stickers. <laughs> so she's got a lot of appeal. That's a, you're on fire right now. So if you have any questions or comments or you just want to talk to us about bananas or aliens or communications, the best way to communicate with us, just leave it in the comments. Like, subscribe. We have fun. Thank you very much, Ray Zawani. Ray, do you have any shows coming up you want to tell the people about? Um, No. I, I, I'll just be hunkered <laughs> down here hoping that no aliens try talking to me through my banana. Well, I think I'm going to be at the Omaha Funny Bones some point in November, and, uh, and we just continue on. So support live comedy, and thank you for watching. Uh, stay tuned for our other segments, uh, Frighteningly Funny and Finding the Funny. I'm Timmy Pescatelli, and this is News from Abroad. This segment of the show we call Finding the Funny. It's to let you know that no matter what has happened, some comedian somewhere has told a joke about it. Here's this week's comedian. What about UFOs? This is exciting because around the whole fucking world, never once did you see a guy from Brooklyn go, holy shit, Frankie, look, a fucking UFO. I'm not saying. But I can be wrong about that, you know why? Because if you were in Brooklyn and you saw a UFO, you would never call the government. In Brooklyn, you don't call the government for shit. Because if you saw a UFO and informed the government, You'd be known as that rat that ratted out the UFO. <laughs> Where is that rat prick that ratted out the UFO? They fucking throw rocks at you. They don't sell your mother bread. <laughs> News from abroad is her message.